so here we have a tree that's commonly found in riparian areas and moist sites throughout the Pacific Northwest. Um, it's a really important species for you to know. And we'll talk in a moment about one of the really unique aspects, which is actually below the ground with the mycorrhizal fungi. But first we'll go ahead and key out the species. So go ahead and open your books to the dichotomous key for the broadleaf trees and shrubs. So you can see that this is indeed a broadleaf and it is deciduous. So first of all, are the leaves simple or compound? So do these leaves look simple or compound? So they're indeed simple. And then are they opposite or alternate? So I have a leaf here, then there, then there. So they are actually alternate. So simple, alternate. That takes us to 15. So our next question is, are the leaves palmately lobed and veined or not palmately lobed and veined? So if that's not like the palm of your hand, then we're gonna go on to number 20. So are the branches armed with thorns, buds red, fruits of brightly colored palm, or branches not armed? So these branches, I can run my hand along them and they are not armed. So that takes us to number 21. So leaves have two to four distinct glands on the petiole or base of leaf, stipules common, or no glands on the petiole of the leaf. So if I look really closely at these leaves, I see that there are no glands on that petiole and there are also no stipules at the base of that leaf. So that takes us to number 22. So then are the leaves wedge shaped apex wider than the base, apex three lobed and tend to persist, or the leaves not wedge shaped, apex not three lobed and may be deciduous or persistent. So again, we can tell that these are deciduous leaves, not persistent, and they are definitely not wedge shaped. So that takes us to number 24. So our next question is, are the leaves three veined from the base? of the blade, petiole short and rounded, or not three veined. And we can see we definitely have more than three veins on this leaf. So that takes us to number 25. Leaves linear, long and slender, or leaves not linear. So linear would be more like your Chrysothamnus or Ericomeria, almost more grass-like. So these are definitely not linear. So number 26, the leaves persistent, stiff, thick and leathery, previous year's leaves present with the current leaves, or the leaves are deciduous and not as above. So these leaves again are deciduous. And that takes us to number 45. All right, number 45, the young twigs distinctly ribbed or ridged, but not triangular and bright Kelly green, or young twigs usually round in cross section, ribbed or triangular in some species, but not bright green. And these definitely feel rounded in cross section. So they can roll easily between my fingers. Um, so that takes us to number 47. Number 47, entire petiole distinctly flattened laterally, blade may be nearly round, chordate, triangular, or rhomboid, or the petiole is round or absent, not flattened laterally, but may be somewhat flattened on top, if petioles are both round and flattened on the same plant, can be keyed either way. So these petioles are round, they roll pretty easily between my fingers. So that takes us to number 48. 48 leaf margins, entire and unlobed, or leaf margins may be toothed, serrated, and or lobed, nearly entire in a few species of salix. So these leaf margins are definitely serrated. In fact, they're doubly serrate. So that takes us to number 52. Leaves two ranked lie roughly in a single plane. Not two ranked in one species with small round leaves, wavy teeth and warty twigs, or leaves not two ranked, maybe three or five ranked or indeterminate. So these are not two ranked, which takes us to number 55. All right, number 55, buds usually stalked, young twigs and pith triangular, 
leaves conspicuously penny-veined, three-ranked, and fruit a persistent woody strobel. Or bud sessel, leaves not two-ranked or three-ranked, pith round or irregular and not triangular. We'll look at the, the leaf that we have in our hand and it is indeed conspicuously penny-veined. Buds, you would see that they're sitting up on stalks. So it has stalk buds and then prominently penny vein. So we are looking at an ulnus. So go ahead and turn in your keys to page 129 for the ulnus. All right, the first question is leaf margins revolute or leaf margins not revolute. So revolute refers to whether or not the leaf margin rolls, kind of curls over on itself. And if I were to run my hand across the edge of that leaf, I can feel a little bit of a lip and that's where the margin has turned in just like if I were to kind of roll back my piece of paper and create a lip that would be like a revolute margin. So these leaf margins are indeed revolute and when you're out in the field especially in sunlight that revolute margin will cast a little bit of a shadow on the leaf. So leaf margins revolute takes us directly to ulnus rubra. So that is probably the most important identifying characteristic on your ulnus rubra is those revolute leaf margins.